Welcome back to my workshop. And now today's project, I've got to make something very special and I've been requested to make something and it's some detailed plans. All right, let me show you what I've got to make. Okay, so here we are in the design suite. Now what I've got to make is a jewelry box, but it's got to be like a miniature wardrobe. Now I've been putting this off for about a year to my shame, but now I've finally got a chance to do it. So basically it's quite a large jewelry box, but it's got to be in the shape of a wardrobe. <laughs> eight drawers it's quite complicated inside um i was going to make it out of wood but if i make it out of wood um, this is going to be shipped out to spain uh, and the change in temperature and humidity might make it distort so i'm going to make it out of mdf uh, it's going to be painted white and gray i'm going to use some mdf You like my face mask? How good is that? Right, so that's the carcass quickly cut out and it looks massive. Uh, I've checked the dimensions, that's what they want. Okay, so my next step is on the edges of the top and the sides. Uh, I want to cut these at a 45 degree angle. Uh, now, if I do those on both the top and the sides, it should give me these sort of cuts like this. So it's a cut here and a cut there. And then when I join it together, I should be able to fold it up now give me a perfect 90 degree angle and the way i'm going to do that is on my bandsaw over here i've tilted my table to 45 degrees okay so right across the bottom here on the inside i'm going to have to have two shelves one here and one here now obviously the MDF I don't want it to flex so what I'm going to do is here I'm going to rebate it into the side okay so what I've done is I've marked my two sides this is six millimeters which is the thickness of the MDF I'm going to rebate these on the table saw a table saw sled okay so a quick catch up with what we're doing here uh, I've recessed here and here uh, and these shelves are just slid in. None of this is glued at the moment. Uh, I've also done a rebate here and here. And this is for the upright. That's better. Okay, there's no glue on that. That's just holding together as it is. So next I've got to concentrate on where the drawers are going to go. Probably do something similar to this. Okay, so my initial plan was to uh, glue it all together with all the shelves and everything inside. But I'm having some alignment issues because now I've cut these grooves out of it. Basically the board is doing this, it's flexing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the outside together with a back. Uh, I'm going to leave that overnight to dry and then I will put the shelves in afterwards. That way I can ensure that the outside is actually square square. I'm going to get on with that now. Uh, I've got all of my side pieces and top and bottom here stuck together with tape. Okay, so each joint has got a tape hinge. Glue it up, fold it up, put the back on and then weight it down. Right, let me get on. Right, so I've now got it uh, gluing up here. I've got the weight in the middle uh, and a clamp on this side and a block on this side. Now I've had to get a bit creative with the other side because I can't get a clamp on it. So I basically put this strut across here. Then I've turned this to an extender and I've got it pushing up here against my shelf. 
and then the same on this one. So hopefully that's pushing down on this corner, this is pushing on this corner, this is pushing in the middle, and the other corners are being pushed down as well. Alright, let's leave that to dry and uh, see what happens in the morning. Right, so for the first time ever, Frank's little workshop is going to have to admit defeat. After a day and a half of working on this thing, got it to the right sort of shape, but it's rubbish. It is really rubbish. The material is wrong. So MDF for this sort of thing, uh, I can't work with it very well. So I'm going to start again and I'm going to use some real wood. So that means I've got to cut this down and try and make enough wood out of it to make another one of these. It's a shame because I started, I even got as far as making drawers, but I just don't like it. Not happy with it. So I'm going to start again. I'm going to tidy up and then start from scratch. Right, so I'm making some progress. Uh, I've decided now to make it out of real wood instead of MDF. And let me show you how far I've got. Okay, so this was the MDF version so far. Uh, and I've now decided to start making it out of wood. Okay, I started off with my big planks. Uh, and I've had to plane those down to get them to the right size. I made the basic frame here and I'm just putting in this centre section here. Um, and so I thought, right, okay, I've got it recessed here. All I need to do is cut it to the right length. I've measured from this point here to this point here and allowed for this rebate but what I didn't allow for is this rebate okay I measured twice and I cut once but I cut it wrong let's do that again Okay, I'm almost ready for the uh, first glue up uh, of the main frame. Uh, now previously I made some little runners for the drawers, but this actually took away the depth of the drawer. So what I'm going to do with the wooden version, uh, I'm just going to have little runners and then I can adjust the drawers so they've got as much depth as possible. Right, I'm going to tidy up and then I'm going to glue this up. Right, just had a bit of a clear up, but uh, this is my sad face. Let me show you what's happened. So I was wheeling my table saw back into its position and the back wheel's fallen off. So now it's all at this jaunty angle and the back wheel's broken. So I've now got to fix that before I can carry on. Look, this one's up in the air. <laughs> I need a cuddle. Anyway. Back onto the glue up. All right, so that's all clamping up. Let's leave that to dry while I fix my table saw. Okay, so this has been gluing overnight. It's all now set and we've got a problem. Let me have a closer look. Okay, so what's my problem? Right, okay, uh, I've checked it to make sure this is perfectly square and this is perfectly square here. But if you go this side, it's not perfectly square. We've got this going on. Okay, right. And if we look at this bottom shelf, it's now bowed. Yeah, put a flat edge against it. And it's quite a big bow. So, now I've got to find out a way of sorting that out. It appears that this is now pushing down on this part and bending this shelf. Which is no good, because otherwise the drawer won't shut. Uh -huh. 
Right, so I think the only way I'm going to be able to fix this is by actually cutting through this upright. Uh, now I'm going to use either my little flush cut saw or I've got this new swanky Japanese one, which is very sharp. Ooh. Right, let me cut through that and then re-glue it. Okay, so obviously this is not an ideal solution, uh, but if I didn't address this now, uh, I'd have to start all over again, um, considering this is already my third attempt at making this thing. Okay, so I've cut it through with my flush cut saw. I've sanded it by putting a piece of sandpaper in and actually sanding both this upright and the shelf. Put some glue on it and then I've converted my little Aldi clamps so they actually use act as stretchers. Okay, here, uh, and I pushed it up, measured it, now that should be good. Not ideal, but at this stage of the game, that's going to be the solution. Let's let that dry and then carry on with the rest. Okay, so while this is all drying and being a bit bodgy, uh, what I'm going to do is concentrate on the drawers. Now my idea is I want to make the drawers out of uh, a bit more harder wood. I don't want to use MDF because it's a bit furry. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put small sliders along the side here on both sides. And then the base of the drawers will basically slide here and then obviously the next one will sit on the top okay and for that what I'm going to use is I want to use hardwood for this uh, so I've got a couple of lumps of old door which I'm going to use so I've got, cut those down to 40 mil uh, and stick them through the planer uh, and for the actual drawer bottoms I'm going to use this which is uh, some bottoms of an old drawer Okay, so what I've done now is I've made the runners. So I've got loads of pieces of wood like this and also quickly sanded the drawer bottoms like this. The idea is put in a drawer bottom, put in the two runners, then put in my next drawer runner. And then with my clamps on extend again, uh, I'm gonna put these in here like this with a bit of glue, obviously. Uh, then the next level like this like this with another clamp okay so there'll be glue wood glue here this is pushing it out and it should stick now i'll do a clamp on the front and the back um, and then that should be all the runners sorted out Okay, let's have a quick update here. Uh, I've stuck the back on uh, and I use the uh, brad nailer just to quickly stick a couple of tacks in there. Uh, I've given it a quick sand down because it was a bit lumpy. All the drawers and drawer fronts are now being stuck together. Okay, so I shall leave those to stick. Uh, I think I better have a bit of a tidy up. It's getting a bit of a mess here because this is turning into a nightmare of a job. Right, that's where we are. Let's carry on. All right, these been drying overnight. Let's get the clamps off and have a look, see if they stay together. Okay, so I've got all the drawer fronts on now. Uh, what I've got to do is just trim off the ends here because they're a little bit offset. Uh, this side's longer. Uh, so what I've done is I've quickly set up my bandsaw here to cut them all to the same length. So let me get on with that. Okay. 
Right, I think that'll do for the draws for now. I'll get back to those later. Uh, now, the knobs haven't arrived yet for the drawers. Now, they're about 9mm long, so that's going to stick out quite a bit. And of course, I haven't allowed for that, so I've now got to increase the thickness of the uh, outer frame uh, probably to about 15mm. So what I'm going to use is another piece of uh, timber, cut it into 15mm strips, and then stick it on the outside. This should bring out the outside face. Bantor. Okay, so I've done a little bit more here. Uh, as you can see, I've extended the front all the way around. All of this lot is all extended, it's bought it out. So the doors, the drawers are now recessed like this. So hopefully when my handles turn up, I can just put those on and they should be able to clear the door. Uh, all the drawers now fit, which is a good thing. Uh, what I've got to do now is the front doors and the drawer fronts and what I'm going to use is a piece of this which is actually MDF but it's got a wood veneer on the top uh, the idea is even though it's going to be painted uh, I'd like to have some sort of wood grain in it so I've got to try and do something with that so first thing to do cut this to size Okay, so I've got my front cut now. Uh, what I've got to do is cut this into two doors and two drawers. Uh, but before I do that, I've just put it on top of the box and it's a little bit tippy. The reason it's tippy is because this centre beam here is slightly raised by about a millimetre. So what I've got to do is take that down. So I'll probably give it a plane and then the sand down just to make sure that this sits flat. Let's get on with that. Okay, so that went quite well. Uh, I've now cut my two drawers, this one and this one, and also my side door and the main door. Uh, and what I did is I made sure when I cut it, I cut it very carefully, so I ended up with a continuous grain. Even though it's going to be painted, uh, it's probably nicer if there is a continuous grain because you'll be able to see the grain through the paint. Okay, right, what I've got to do now is some sanding and filling. Right, so now I've got to stick the front on the drawers. Uh, now the problem is there's nowhere for this to locate. So if I stick this on wrong, all of the doors and the drawer fronts are going to look wonky. So what I'm going to do, using the floor as reference, two or three layers of masking tape. Okay, and that should give me probably about one and a half mil clearance. The jewelry box on the flat surface, some spacers in the back of the drawer, so it holds the drawer out just proud of the surface. Okay, so when I put the drawer in, it's sticking slightly proud. Make sure I've got this up the right way. So that's where that's going to go. Put some glue on there and then clamp it. Okay, draw it in, draw it on, making sure I've got it up the right way. Okay. Is while that's drying, I shall do the next one. But in the meantime, we've had an exciting delivery from the smiley face people. These smiley face people. And what they've sent me is this. That's blue. I wanted charcoal. Excellent. Okay, so I've been waiting for about a week for some hardware to turn up. Uh, I've finally got my hinges, which are here. Uh, and I've also got my knobs. Let's have a look. 
Right, so here they are. They've all turned up. I've got 24 of these things. And the problem is, they're bloody tiny. Ah, uh, looks like I've got to try and make something else. Right, so these knobs are far too small for anything. Right, okay, but good job. I've got one of these. Ta-da! Uh, what's that got to do with it? Well, it's got a dowel. I'm going to use this dowel and try and turn some little knobs out of it. Right, to the lathe. Right, so my dowel that I was going to use here, uh, that's no good. Uh, it chips quite a lot uh, and it's not really working very well. I managed to get a little teeny tiny knob made. But I've got to make so many of these uh, and it takes about three quarters of an hour to make one. Uh, so back to the silver knobs. They should end up looking like this. Uh, I've got a countersink underneath. Oh, knobs. Right, so after a couple of hours of what can only be called fettling, uh, I've been trying to get the doors to fit properly. Uh, what I want to do now is uh, I want to do a small taper, like this one. A small taper all around the edges to make it a little bit more showy. I'm going to use my router table. In your world, I'll be a couple of seconds. In my world, probably about an hour. Okay, so that's all the edges tapered uh, around the two doors, the drawers and the drawers inside. Now, obviously, we've only got one big door. So I'm going to put a pretend groove down there to pretend there's two doors. Right, I've just spent uh, the last hour or so sanding and tidying up the workshop, trying to get as dust free as possible. I've had my extractor go in full blast, so it's been noisy as hell in here. Uh, I've been shopping and I've got some paint. I've got some undercoat. Uh, then I've got some more undercoat. Uh, then I've got some paint. Uh, then I've got some paint. Oh, then I've got some more paint. Uh, then I've got some more paint. Oh, and some more paint. Uh, then I've got some gear lacquer. And then some spray adhesive that we'll need later. Now the shop hasn't got any paint left because it's all here. Let's start doing some undercoat. Right, well that was a complete disaster. The uh, paint I bought, I bought this from the factory shop. It's absolutely sh It's rubbish. So I've got to go old school. I'm going to use some paint on stuff. Let's start painting. Right, okay, so I've got the first coat of primer on all this lot. Leave that to dry overnight. Right, that's me done for tonight. Gonna to put my extractor back on and gonna have a cup of tea. Right, so I've just spent another hour or so sanding down the primer, uh, ready for the top coat. I've sprayed the top coat on and look what's happened. The top coat that I've sprayed on has reacted with the primer and it's bubbling all over the place. It's all just ruined. And on the side of the case, look, all of this lot now has got to be scraped off again. So I've got to scrape that all off again, um, start again, find a different paint. Right, here we go. Right, so it's a couple of days later now. Um, I've stripped this down as much as I can, got rid of all the old paint. Now it looks like the undercoat I used was a solvent-based uh, primer. Uh, and obviously the paint I used must have been the cellulose-based. Right, so what I've done now is I've gone out and bought some of this stuff, plastic coat, plastic coat primer, plastic coat gloss, some plastic coat matte for the doors, and some plastic coat sealer. Um, yeah, so like a lacquer. Another 32 quid's worth, but it is what it is. Give these a coat of primer, let it dry, and then carry on with the painting. My extractor's been going here, and it's managed to block up the filter with paint, which is not good, so I've got to take that off and clean it out. Right, let's leave this to dry and then get some grey on it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so the paint saga continues. Uh, I've now painted all of the drawers uh, and the doors, uh, and it's come out quite a nice colour. Problem is, that colour's too dark. So I've had to go out and buy some more paint, which is this stuff, uh, which is a lighter grey. Just paint the drawer fronts and the doors, uh, and then I've got to try and do some artificial wood grain. Okay, so I've quickly done the inside of the uh, one of the doors, and it's given me this sort of effect, which I think is the sort of thing I'm after. Uh, now what I'm using is this thing, which is actually a pan scrubber, like a nylon-y, bristly thing. Let me show you what I'm doing. Okay, so literally, open, hold off. Okay, now take my roller, put it this way so you can see it, and literally roll it and then twist it at the same time. Okay, don't press too hard, just so it basically scratches the surface. Okay, and that's giving me my woody grain effect. Excellent. Now I'm going to line the inside of each drawer with felt. Uh, I've cut a square out the size of the bottom and then another strip that goes around the edge using a scalpel and a rule. Uh, what I've got to do now is before I put the uh, edge around, uh, I've got to put all my knobs on. Right, so this goes on and on and on. Right, I've just spent ages uh, trimming the drawers and trying to sort out because there's now there's paint on it, the drawers don't slide in very well. Um, so I had to strip off some of the paint and now I've got to wax it, but I haven't done that yet. But it looks like the drawers sort of fit now. Okay, right, so that's that. So what we've got to do now is we've got to do some little segments uh, for individual rings to sit in. I cut segments out like this. So this sort of thing. Uh, and then they'll be covered in felt as well. So I've just spent two hours making this lot, and this, and that, and that, and this, and that, and this, and that, and realised you can't actually get your fingers in there to get the earrings out. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to use this Perspex, which gives me this, which is much better. Let's start again. Okay, after much more cutting, I now have my cross pieces like this, and I have my vertical pieces like this. So these are all now cut out of Perspex. Uh, all I have to do is assemble Okay, so in this section here, um, we want to have some dangling chains. Right, so that's it, it's finally finished. Uh, after three or maybe four weekends of uh, lots and lots of work, um, a couple of failed attempts. The second attempt was this one, uh, which was proved to be wrong because it was made of MDF, just didn't work. Uh, had all sorts of divider problems with the drawers, um, paint disaster, but it's finally finished and it's under here. Do you want to have a look? Here we go. There you go. Right, so my brief was to make a small jewellery box, or quite a large jewellery box, uh, in the shape of a wardrobe. I had a set of plans, which I've worked to as much as I can. Uh, and here's the final thing. 
it looks like a mini wardrobe. Um, let's have a closer look. Okay, so here it is uh, on this side. We've got a, what looks like a double door, but it's actually just a single door. Uh, and behind that, we have a set of drawers. Uh, each of these is divided into small compartments. And uh, now that's with Perspex, uh, but with a cover on the top. Okay, so each of those is like that. Um, that works fine. Uh, this other side, has got a section in the top for things like bracelets. Uh, and then here we've got some hanging hooks on both sides and on the back for necklaces. Um, at the bottom, we've got two drawers, which are all felt lined. Uh, these are for watches and more bracelets. Okay, so that is about the size of it. Um, took long enough. It's got me a thing on the back, which is good. Okay, so what I should do now is ship this out to Spain uh, and hopefully it will get there without being damaged. Right, thank you very much for watching. Um, sorry it was a bit of a long video, but I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So of course I've now got to raise the outside rain. Oh, God, come on. Okay, so here we are over in the... In the um, Cut through this uh, shelf, start again. <laughs>